Alright, here's part five of the Planetary Soul Retrieval via the Royal Fleet astral mission that I went on last night. So at this point, after I've asked the elves, who are the ruling class of this paradigm, whether they're aware that the humans have gained sentience, because if they're aware then, of that, then they're, they're committing a crime. If they're not aware of that, then they just need to be educated. And they weren't really aware, but they were also remiss because the humans have been sentient for a while and they hadn't noticed. And at this point, after I've kind of come in as an emissary of the royal fleet, which was some type of code word that everyone shifted the way they treated me after I said that, and I'm in an android's body at this point, also not with my own Karis consciousness very much. It's kind of popping in and out. But what ends up happening is one of the aides to the elves sitting at this council table comes over and hits the android in the center of the forehead with the finger like there's a hidden button there and the android body and this is a very gray black and white reality we're in a room made of corroded metal it's really you know not beautiful not sparkly pretty type of thing um the body the android body splits in two and falls away and my Kara self just steps out of the middle and now, this often happens when I'm doing multi-D stuff, that there's a greater intelligence that comes in and takes over, and then I'm acting all, you know, like I know what I'm doing, and there's the my small self-consciousness that's going, whoa, that's crazy, and this is kind of what happens in that situation, because there's a me that steps out like the emissary from the royal fleet that I am, and then there's the me who's observing it and going, whoa, bananas, you know. And not only did... I step out, but then I just stepped up into the air and was sitting in lotus position, floating, speaking to the elves sitting at the table. And I looked down, and I'm scanning them, and seeing that they're definitely elves, they definitely look like elves, you know, fine of form, perfect, but they're prisoners too, because one of them moves their hand in a funny way on the table, and I see that on their ring finger, right between where the nail and the knuckle is, so right here, there's a band of smoky, black, gray, kind of ephemeral matter there that was some type of shackle, some type of slavery mark. So I go and peel all of them off. Uh, there were, you know, five or six, some amount of, of council members sitting there who were supposedly in charge of this. But I realized the reason that they were in a daze too, they hadn't known that the humans had gotten sentience was because they were also enslaved in their minds. So I'm peeling off these um, these marks of slavery, and they're, they're just coming off. I'm able to lift them off because of the place that I hold in the dream as the emissary. And then I realize that I need to look further up the ladder to see who's responsible for this mayhem. And in that moment, I'm transported up, and I'm in a ship that's floating on the edge of the atmosphere of this planet, and in it is this man who is the major planet guard guardian, planetary guardian, yeah. And he reminded me, if you've read the Dune books, he reminded me of the Emperor. He was, this man, was huge and fat. And I mean like, I don't mean overweight, you know. I mean so gigantic that a forklift would have been needed to move him. Um, definitely past the point of some type of imbalance into something really, really, really out of whack. And I'm looking at him and realizing that all of the coating and layers of fascia and fat cells and extra skin all over him are a result of the traumas that this planet has been running because they're trying to create human sentience in a duality paradigm. And that means trauma till you wake up, which I had just experienced in the consciousness of the girl and her android friend who had to have fear, 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 fear in order to become lucid. And so what I did then, and this is again me acting from some greater intelligence that's just telling me what to do, intuitives, you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you just do stuff and don't understand why you do it until afterward. But what I realized, because even true in our human bodies, fat cells store our toxins because fat cells are kind of insulators. So that's why oftentimes when you lose weight, when you lose a significant amount of weight, it's more emotional and you might go through things and you might cleanse out things that are emotional and that are traumatic. It's not just about calories to exercise ratio here. And I started to tear apart this emperor, this, this planetary guardian who was obviously extremely unhealthy, eyes completely glazed over, not really conscious anymore. 
and I just started ripping him apart. And what I was doing was ripping the the layers off of him because what I was finding was inside of this enormous job of the hut kind of disgusting being because you, you don't overweight does not mean gross this guy was gross he was disgusting you know his and I don't just mean the fact that he had extra poundage I mean he, he was dripping with filth like literally and so I'm ripping him apart and inside is a healthy glowing man who I then who hit it's like he had just been born out of this cocoon that was created by the traumas going on on the planet below that he was the guardian of and it wasn't so much conspiracy-ish. It wasn't like someone was keeping this planet. It was that they were running an old program, like an old machine that's broken that someone's just forgotten to turn off. And the Royal Fleet, whatever that means, I'm not exactly sure, had come to help this planet to evolve into free will choice rather than um, unknowing slavery. Because you could say that this planetary guardian was kind of in the same boat as everybody down on the planet. He was a slave as well. So I rip away all of the junk covering him, take his hand, smile at him, and then we go down to the planetary surface. And that was an interesting trip too because I was kind of levitating and floating at this point. So I took one step levitating, thinking that we were going to have to travel all the way down. But it was just one step of levitation, kind of guiding him behind me, and then we were on the planetary surface. And we weren't in the metal city. We were on some living green grass, which is somewhere else. I think probably all of the humans and elves on this planet were all in one city, and the planet is meant to be terraformed. So the rest of it was being developed. So his feet were on the cool grass, and I knelt down and put my hands on the tops of his feet and grounded him in and connected him with the planetary healed consciousness. And you could see that he just kind of came on and woke up and then became lucid and then we discussed how to heal it and he told me that all of the metal that made the prison cities would be melted and added to the lava rivers apparently there are lava rivers on this planet that are still creating new continents and new land masses and I understood at that point that all of the knowledge that was gained through those dark ages would be smelted into the land that was now being created by those lava flows when the metal was melted into it and so that planet would now hold the consciousness of that time to save it and the record and to know what had happened because it happened for expansion and experience and also all of the people were freed all of the elves were freed and the idea was that everyone is now going to be back in touch with the land the way that they should be as a as a being of that planet and also that the children from henceforth were to be taught all the planetary healing songs and they were to sing them always what are the planetary healing songs? I don't know. And then as I was coming back into my own body after tying this up in a nice little bow, you know, I was wondering about it, and the words echoed through my mind, traveling law keeper, which I had been told I was going to be promoted to several months ago, and I didn't know what that meant. But now I'm seeing, okay, that's what it means. And I also was wondering what that means for Earth. There must have been some reason that an Earth being would be taken to fix those problems or assist in their fixing or just monitor their fixing, whatever it was, and then bring that knowledge back to Earth. What is it? Well, you could say the obvious, that there's unknown slavery going on here, that people aren't aware that they have a choice. Yes, all this is true. And on this other planet, now that people had a choice, they could more consciously assist the planet in its own evolution. And that's kind of the point. That's why they were even developed. That's why them gaining sentience was the end of that old Dark Age game. So it could have been that. And it also could be that perhaps now is the time for us to learn our own planetary healing song. So I urge you watching this video, if you've gotten to the end of this long story, to start playing planetary healing songs, to try to detach yourself from the reality of things happening that just hurt, and try to detach yourself from media that entertains you by hurting you, and try to begin to connect yourself with things that entertain you by lifting you. One great way to judge where you are on the spectrum of creation versus stagnation is, do your thoughts feel like a ding, or do they feel like a thud? Those of you who know what I'm talking about will know instantly. Those of you who don't, it's okay. Everyone doesn't think that way. But like I said, this was an experience that I had. I know it was an astral travel experience, a mission that I was on earlier. And last night, the last words in my journal were, and I quote, I accept, just show me what to do. So I knew some crazy stuff was going to go down, dreaming. And also, I've been sleeping in my Moldavite. So there you go. Uh... 
there's always interesting things that happen when you do that kind of stuff. So that's what happened. If you choose to believe this is just my own subconscious, that's fine. If you do believe I was astral traveling on an interplanetary mission, that's fine too. That's what I think happened, but I'm biased, you know? So I hope this was helpful. I don't know why I had to blast it out to the planet, but I know I did. This is the first thing I've done this morning. I had to get up and record these videos for you guys instantly. And so I hope that they're reaching the whoever they should be reaching. I trust that they are. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. There are lots of upcoming events. I'll post my website link in the information section below this video so you guys can see what's going on. There are explosions of downloads coming to me this year for things to do and classes to teach and ways to assist those around me in, in um, harmonizing. I don't want to use Ascend because we are not only ascending, we're expanding in all directions, not just one. So harmonizing and becoming more synthesized with our planetary consciousness and our consciousness as divine beings. All right, guys, that's all I got. Go in peace. Have a beautiful day. Enjoy this cold weather, and let's look forward to the new codes that are being brought by the Arctic winds to our planet in the warmer climates to upgrade us for spring growth. Go in peace, and I'll talk to you again very soon.